Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. I am your teacher, Dr. Khuram Shahzad. I am from National University of Modern Languages. And today we are going to talk about the speech act theory. This is another idea, uh, idea of uh, pragmatics. So we are dealing with speech act theory in pragmatics. Speech act theory was proposed by John Austin in 1962. He was a philosopher and it was further developed by John Searle in 1969. So these two people are the pioneers of speech act theory. When they were working, it was the time of positivism when people believed that language is used for description or declaration or to know or to find out the falseness or truth value of something. But John Austin and Sir, they did not agree with such type of ideas. Austin wrote a book, How to Do Things with Words, in which he talked about that language is not just used for falseness or truth value. It is also used to carry out different kinds of tasks. So he means to say that speech acts are used to perform different kinds of acts. John Austin believed that there are three acts that we can perform with the help of each speech act. These three acts are also known as forces of speech acts. So it means that each speech act will have three forces or three speech acts. Number one is locutionary force, number two is elocutionary force, and number three is perlocutionary force. So locutionary force means the literal meaning of the words. And elocutionary force means the intended meaning of the proposition, of the sentence. And perlocutionary force means the effect of the speech on the listener. And then what this listener does in response to the speech act that he or she has listened to. For example, I visit one of my friend's home and when I enter the room, I see that AC is over there and I say this sentence, it's very hot in here. So of course, my intention is not to talk about the temperature. My intention is also to talk about that the person should turn on the AC. But if he does not understand the intention of my proposition, then he may not be able to give me any response. But of course, when two people, they are interacting, they know each other, they know the background knowledge, and they know the physical setting in which the interaction is going on. So the locutionary act or locutionary force is that it's hot in here. It means the temperature is very high. But of course, I am not just talking about the temperature is very high. I also mean to say that he should turn on the AC or he should bring me a glass of water. So when I said it's hot in here, it's locutionary force is the temperature is very high. But intention is that he should turn on the AC. So as soon as he understands my meaning, he gets up and turns on the AC. Or he gets up and goes and brings me a glass of water. So this was the perlocutionary act or perlocutionary force. Again, I explain this. It's hot in here. Locutionary force or act means that the temperature is very high. But he is my friend and he knows me and he also knows the physical environment in which we are interacting. So he understands and he gets up and he turns on the AC. So when he gets up, this is the effect of my speech act. And, and when he turns on the AC, this is the effect of my speech act on him. That not only he understood what I meant, but also he performed the action or he went outside in the kitchen and he brought me a glass of water. So this is the effect of my speech act on the listener. 
it also means that usually locutionary force is one but elocutionary or perlocutionary forces are many so it's hot in here temperature is very hot but elocutionary forces either he should turn on the ac or he should go and bring me a glass of water or he should do both the things so when he gets up and turns on the ac this is the perlocutionary effect and when he goes and brings me a glass of water this is another perlocutionary force or another perlocutionary act that he has performed sir did not agree with all the ideas that austin has talked about sir has given his own ideas about speech act theory so we can say that this theory was further classified by john sir he states that the taxonomy used by austin is defective especially in its lack of clear criteria for distinguishing one kind of elocutionary force from another so elocutionary force the intended meaning the intention of the speaker so he divides elocutionary act into five basic types directives commissives representative or assertive declarative and expressive all these they have got three forces and again here you should remember that we are talking about form and function when the form and function they are same our speech act is direct when the form and function they are not same our speech act is indirect for example one of my colleagues is saying that i am going outside would you like to go and have tea with me so in response i say i have got a class i am not saying that i would like to go with you yes or no that i cannot go with you rather i am saying i have got a class so he has got the answer so this is indirect speech act i am using an assertive sentence but i am telling him that i cannot go with you so there is no one on one relationship between form and function same is the case then for example in directive speech act it is conversation between first and second person here the speaker tries to make the hearer do something with such words as ask order command request beg plead pray and treat invite permit advise or demand give me your pen so this is a very direct speech act leave the town immediately this is a very direct speech act but can you open the door so it looks that it is an interrogative sentence i am asking a question but when i say can you open the door so this is an order so here there is no one on one relationship between form and function form is an indirect speech act can you open the door but it could be an order that you have to open the door for me or if a father is asking his son you better you'd better eat this dinner fast you'd better eat this dinner fast so in form it looks that there is advice but the father is giving the order to his son that you will have to eat this dinner or nothing else so in indirect speech act there is no one on one relationship between form and function commissive here the speaker commits himself or herself to the future course of action which were with verbs such as guarantee promise swear refuse or threaten i will repay the money i will repay the money so the speaker is committing to himself that he is going to repay the money i swear to tell the truth so speaker is committing to himself that he swears that he is going to tell the truth then there is representative speech act here the speaker asserts a proposition to be true using such verbs as affirm believe conclude deny report or state 
the earth is round i think he is saying the truth so this is representative speech act declarative speech act here the speaker alters the external status or condition of an object situation or context solely by making the utterance class dismissed you are fired so when somebody says you are fired the state of the person changes when the religious scholar says i announce you husband and wife the state of the person changes when a husband gives divorce to his wife i give you divorce the state of the person changes so such type of act is called declarative speech act you find i find the defendant not guilty so the person who was guilty when the judge says i find the person not guilty his state changes expressive here the speaker expresses an attitude to or about a state of affairs using such verbs as thanks congratulate apologize praise i am sorry for being late so you are talking about your feelings and emotions what a great day congratulations okay i repeat i have talked about in speech act theory we have got speech acts which are used to perform actions according to austin each speech act it has got three forces locutionary force illocutionary force and perlocutionary force locutionary force is the dictionary meaning or literal meaning of the sentence illocutionary force is the intended meaning of the sentence and perlocutionary force is the effect of the speech act on the hearer and then what kind of response is going to come from the hearer for example somebody is making me a call and i am in the classroom i cut the call of the person so this is my response and i think if the person has got knowledge he will definitely understand the person cannot talk with that person same is the case if some very important call is coming from my brother but again if i am in the class if i cut the number he will understand that this person is busy right now and he should not be disturbed so that is also perlocutionary act and my perlocutionary act that i have performed in response to the call has given him a message has sent him a message and the message is that the person is busy and cannot talk to him right now and i gave the example it's hot in here and it has got locutionary force that the temperature is very high it has got a locutionary force that the intention is to turn on the ac or bring me a glass of water it has got perlocutionary force when the person goes and he brings me a glass of water this is the perlocutionary act that he has performed or when he gets up and turns on the ac so this is the perlocutionary act that he has performed another example can be the bus driver says to the students particularly to the boys the bus won't move unless you move in out of the doorway so locutionary forces the bus is not going to move and you will have to move away from the doorway so illocution is the intention of the driver that the driver is not going to move the bus so once the students they are away from the doorway the bus will move then we have talked about sells speech act theory the classification of the illocutionary act that he has given so he has said that there are five types of speech acts declarative assertive expressive commissives and expressives lastly i would like to talk about felicity conditions now felicity conditions are very important for a speech act to work felicity conditions play a very important role if felicity conditions are not there speech act is going to miss fire for this again i give you the example from the pakistani culture for example if the marriage ceremony of someone is going to be held soon in pakistan it is the requirement that 
they will have to have cards they will have to have invitation cards and these invitation cards are distributed among those people whom you want to invite where the place and the time of the ceremony is mentioned so when you are going to perform this speech act your feelings and emotions are involved your behavior will tell the other person that that whether you really want them to come and join in their ceremony or not so once the invitation card is ready so groom or bride grooms parents are supposed to go and invite the people and then feelings and emotions will be involved for example phuppo aunt plays a very important role if you are sending an invitation card through a whatsapp to your aunt to your phuppo she is not going to come to join your marriage ceremony so you will have to take care of all the other kinds of requirements which are required they are called felicity conditions so when your parents they go and invite them and very warmly and respectfully you carry out the speech act the speech act will be performed otherwise it is going to miss fire on a whatsapp message or on a text message people are not going to join you in your marriage ceremony or if parents are not there so someone with whom you are going to give the authority they can invite the other people so this is how the speech act will be performed same is the case if someone has died and you are to express your feelings and emotions of disappointment of pain so your feelings and emotions should say should express that whatever you are saying they are carrying with the speech act if i want to shake hand with someone and if feelings and emotions are not involved and i do it like that so people are not going to shake hand with me after that because my feelings and emotions are not involved so felicity conditions are those conditions that you will have to fulfill when you are performing the speech acts so these are for example in marriage ceremony an invitation card and then proper event it has to be held somewhere it should be there groom should be there bride should be there and the parents who are going to invite the people these feelings and emotions should be involved over there so this is how felicity conditions when they are there with the speech acts the speech acts will be performed thank you very much